I'm Gary Searle, and my book, which has just been completed, is called First Order, Australia's Highway of Lighthouses. What I aimed for initially was to document all of the lighthouses which had a first order lens. Uh, now, that was the biggest size that was ever used in Australia. You're talking about two metres across and about three to four metres high, with several hundred panes of, of glass or prisms within there. And a lot of the, the lighthouses, they remove the lenses over the time. And so what I wanted to do is to find or trace sort of what lenses had been in the lighthouses and, and where they might have gone. It then evolved, so I looked more into the history. And while it does the initial aim, it also talks a lot about the people that lived on the light stations. The one behind me is a third order, I believe. And they had six orders. So first order was the biggest and it went down to a sixth order. So first order was about two metres wide, sixth order was about a foot, or, or the old um, 30 centimetres. Um, and so all the major lighthouses, where they needed the beam to go as far as possible, especially down the bottom of Tasmania, where there's a lot of fog, uh, they needed that size lens to get the, the range. And so the book covers the major, lighthouses, about 40 of them around Australia. I visited um, all of the national archives around Australia uh, and a lot of also the state libraries through their archives. So it was just a matter of spending time um, in those places. But also what I did find probably the, the most helpful was um, Lyndon O'Grady from AMSA who uh, made available some wonderful old documents that uh, weren't available, and I found things that I probably wouldn't have found elsewhere. I visited every lighthouse in the book. Some of those were very hard to get to. There's a few island lighthouses off the coast of Albany, and also right down below, about 15 kilometres off the southern coast of Tasmania. That was probably the hardest to get to. Um, and fortunately, uh, AMSA uh, and AMS were very good in getting me up there. I don't have one favourite. They're all sort of special for different reasons, but I guess Cape Naturalist, which is down near Busselton in Western Australia, has just got this massive two-face, two-panel lens, um, and I think that's probably my favourite lens. Uh, when you then look at towers, things like the, the stonework in Gabo Island, off the, the coast of um, the Victorian New South Wales border. It is just magnificent to think that they built that so many years ago. Lighthouses are very special and compared to other buildings, there's something that sets them apart. And I, I believe a lighthouse has soul. It's not simply just a, a structure. And when you think about the, the, the men that built them, living in tents, in wild, remote areas. The families that lived on them in isolation, the keepers that lit the light every night and kept that burning, the wives that um, looked after the family, looked after the husband, the home, and the kids that quite often lived in isolation. Maybe they had two or three friends within their small community. Sometimes they were the only child on the island. So that sort of really, that's the soul of a lighthouse is, is that history of those people. And we really, they protected our seashores and um, I think we owe them something to you know, keep their memory. I thoroughly enjoyed you know, writing the book, visiting all the locations was an experience in itself. And I just can't thank AMSA enough for, for what they did for me, providing information, getting to the islands. Um, it's just been wonderful. Thank you.